In the city south loop, the building that once housed the E2 nightclub still stands. The business, however, has long since closed, and the trauma and subsequent heartbreak that ensued on a cold February night 20 years ago will always remain as well. He was a happy-go-lucky boy. He was a mama's boy, I will tell you that. That is Mary Ray. She and her husband Howard lost their 24-year-old son, Deshan. He was killed in a stampede that started on the second floor club, where a local radio station was hosting an event. Fight broke out and they called the guards to come and break it up. They couldn't break it up, so they started spraying mace. People throwing up everywhere, throwing up everywhere. You cannot get out, can't breathe. Panicked people fled down the stairs, colliding with others who were just arriving and going up them. Some people fell, and in a matter of moments, a pile began to form. Man, it was crazy. Howling people was dropping dead right in front of your face. And, and it was nothing. You, you was helpless because you were alive, but you seeing people dropping dead because they've been crushing it. Ain't nothing you could do about it. <laughs> 15 ambulances from the Chicago Fire Department rushed to the scene and a medical response plan as well, meaning a triage unit of doctors and nurses from local hospitals were dispatched to. Within a short amount of time, the crush of humanity in that stairwell and front door entrance took the lives of 21 people. Mary and Howard Ray's son, Deshand, was among the dead. An aspiring music producer, he was at the radio station remote to network. Word quickly spread of what was happening at E2. Deshan's older brother, a police officer, rushed to the scene to try to find him. He was waiting for him to come out. And uh, he, he was standing there waiting when he never came out, so he called us. He told us, no, you guys just stay home. Let me go down there. I'm, I'll be down there in about five or 10 minutes from where, you know, from where he lived. So he said, you guys just keep calling. And that's what happened. We, we continued to call uh, emergency rooms, and he went down. And when he got there, um, he, uh, they had it all blocked off. It was then that a paramedic suggested to him to look inside a neighboring business, which had become essentially a makeshift morgue. And that's what he went in and looked at what he found in right there, laying on the floor. It had he already passed? Yeah, he had passed. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's, that's how it went down that night. Two ladies I picked up died. Two of them. The subsequent investigation was like salt to the wound. E2 had been in violation of city building codes. It should not have been open to begin with. Right or wrong? The club owners were charged with manslaughter in the deaths of the 21, but those charges were overruled on appeal after years of legal appeals and court rulings as well. The two owners were sentenced to 500 hours of community service in 2015. They offered a brief apology in court that said nothing outside of it. The city attorney then, Steve Patton, said he felt this was an appropriate sentence, telling the Tribune at the time, quote, this is a better way to bring closure to this than have them sit in jail, unquote. But that was just a slap on the wrist to the Rays for a tragedy they feel was so preventable. And that's what hurts me so bad. Two decades after his death, Deshan's parents believe many details about that fateful night have never been made public. Though dozens of lawsuits were filed in connection with the stampede, the Rays filed in federal court in 2018 their lawsuit is the only one that is still pending. They allege that the city violated their civil rights during the litigation of their initial wrongful death lawsuit, and they claim that the city failed to turn over all of the surveillance footage that captured the fatal stampede. The question is not who did what um, on the night of the incident, because that phase of the litigation already ended. What we're litigating right now is whether the litigation process in state court was fair or not. And the Rays are contending that it was not because the city didn't produce all the videos that they should have produced. The question is, did the city or CPD intentionally suppress those tapes? I don't know if it's knowingly or not. What we know at this point is that there is a witness that claims that there are more, uh, that there were videotapes available more than what was made in the state court 
uh, litigation. So either a this whoever kept the cameras was negligent in doing so, or it was intentional. I don't know. We are not in the discovery phase yet. As the 20th anniversary approaches February 17th, the Rays say they think of their son every day. The son who would call and just say hi to mom and dad, to say I love you, to check up on mom after she got home from work. He would call me every day. I say, why are you calling me every five minutes? Don't you have something to do on your job? So, you know, you know I got to keep a check on you. So that's the way he was. And when he laughed, he laughed and his whole body shook. The Rays are retired and volunteered two times a week at Deshan's old high school, Proviso West. Today, all of this time later, they know in their heart of hearts, their son would have been something fantastic. It would be wonderful. A representative for the city's law department declined to comment on the Ray's pending suit. In court filings, though, attorneys for the city have denied that surveillance tapes were withheld. The next hearing in that case has yet to be scheduled. Patrick Elwood, WGN News.